Reminds us in the lyrics of the sinner's prayer, I could have been dead sleeping in my grave, but God blessed me to see another day. When I did wrong, He was still there. I'm so glad that God still hears a sinner's prayer. He repeats that verse again. I'm so glad that God still hears a sinner's prayer. And then He messed me up. Trust me, said this. I walked in the church, Lord, on a Sunday morning, stood outside, contemplating what I should walk through the door. You see a lot of folks inside, knew me from way back when. People holding me to all those past sins. But I know all have sinned and come short of his glory. I'm just glad to be here to tell my story. I don't know about you. But I'm glad to be here to tell my story about the Lord redeemed a wretch like me. That's right. The series Redemption has been inspired to encourage us to remember it is only through God's grace we're able to stand. And then I want to challenge you to show the love of Christ. To those who may be struggling to get back up. Do not look down on anyone. Because only by the grace of God are you standing up. The difference between a fallen man and a fallen woman is the grace of God showed up. And they got up. And some who are still laying down need a church to lift them back up. Not to point your holding down fingers, but to lift them back up. One more note before we get to the text. Because I'm trying to prepare you for what God is doing here. See, Sunday morning look different than Monday through Friday. When you pass by here Monday through Friday, you can't tell what this is. You got all kind of folks around here. They look like me. Doing God's work. So when Sunday comes, the house is ready. And I don't need you self-righteous church folks to run the real church away on Sunday morning. Ah, uh, you missed that. You, you, you missed that. You missed that. The real church still smell like what they've been through. Kind of look like what they're going through. But the fact is, they're saying, Lord, I need you. They're not so holy, they don't need the Lord anymore. Church, watch this. The church is not a place for your self-righteous holding down attitude. But the church is a hospital for the hurting, the wounded, sick people to discover God's amazing grace and be made whole again. That's the church I want to pass. Where you can come in any kind of way and get the love of God. 
and leave a better way. Uh, yes. See, maybe it's because I'm still grateful that God redeemed me and saved me. And I'll spend the rest of my life saying thank you and spread the gospel of redemption everywhere I go. I thank God that I'll never forget that he saved me. Turn your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 18. I, I, I'm so ready to preach this morning. That's a release in this house to transform this community. Jeremiah chapter 18. Remain standing, we read verse 1 through 6. Thank God for the media team quickly. Because God keep playing these tricks with me. Yesterday I had a funeral, 18-year-old had a sermon all prepared and ready to go. And right before the funeral, God said, no, preach this. Yes. Maybe change the whole thing. Oh. It is more than I got here tied from last night and sermon all ready. God said, no, preach this. Uh -huh. So you get the same time I'm getting because God gave it to me all upstairs just a few minutes ago. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1 through 6. I like when the Bible gives you a little indications of what it's about to be about. It's at the potter's house. Then the word came to Jeremiah found from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house. And there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house. I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot, the black man, the black woman, the brown man, the brown woman, the white man, the white woman, the rich, the poor, the educated, uneducated, the messed up, the straightened up, the gotten up, the haven't gotten up yet, that's all those on the pot. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. It was damaged, broken. But perfect. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as that seemed best to him. In verse 5, we're going to mess you up, y'all. Verse 5 says, Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, Can I not do for you, Israel, Greenhouse, Greens Point, Houston, Harris County, United States of America. Can I not do for you as I've done for Israel? In this potter's hand, like clay in the hand of potter, so are you in the hands of the Lord. Take your seat, say, God can make you all over again. God told the prophet Jeremiah to tell the people I'm able to take the broken. I'm able to take the damage. I'm able to take the messed up. I'm able to take that which was getting ready to be thrown away and discarded, but when you put it in my hand, I'm able to reshape it, reform it, and make it all over again. And for some of us to make it over again and again and again and again. And I come to prophesy to this choir today that your situation in the Lord's hand is getting ready to be made over again. And the Lord is getting ready to bring the best of you out of you. Stop worrying about what you've been through. Stop worrying about the damage. Stop worrying about your past. The Lord says today I come to redeem you. Today I come to restore you. Today I come to make you all over again. No matter how cracked up or broken you may be, God says today I'm able. I'm able to redeem you and make you better than before. You just got to believe. Yeah. And then once God makes you over again, now you have a responsibility to go and share the good news yeah. Yeah. with somebody else. Oh my God. Good, Pastor. Well, watch this. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. I want to show you this. Therefore, 
if anyone, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, in Christ. See, I, I, you know, I love the church, don't get me wrong, I love the church, but just because you're in church don't mean you're in Christ. Some of us go to church but never come to Christ. So our attitude may be a little distorted. Because we have a church attitude and not a Christ attitude. But, 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 but anyone who is in Christ is a new creature. The Amplified Bible breaks down what it means to be a new creature. They are reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. See, you can't tell me you've been born again and still talk about this the way we are. The Holy Spirit has the power to erase the old you and create a new you. And the new you don't sound like mama them sound. So you can't blame mama them on your current behavior if you're a new creature. Amen. Well, it's the way I was raised, but wasn't you raised up again? Ah, you can, see, we're looking for excuses to stay stuck when the Spirit of God says, I want to renew you. It says, the old things. Oh, I love the way the Amplified Bible breaks it down. The old things. The previous moral and spiritual condition. That messed up attitude. That mouth. Mm -hmm. That's right, Pastor. Well, well, everywhere you went, wow, I was soon to follow. Always in the odds and always in something. That's the old you. The Holy Spirit comes in and makes your moral convictions, your attitude, your language, your talk, your behavior, the way you respond, it makes it different. If you used to be a cusser, you shouldn't be a cusser if you've been endowed by the Holy Spirit. If you used to be a person that lied and gossiped on everybody, you can't say, I'm a new preacher, and you still lying and gossiping. That don't add up. Old things, moral and spiritual conditions, have passed away. Let me make, make this clear. Have passed I mean, a funeral took place. Right. Right. But we say, well, have you heard? They passed away. Right. A funeral. Yeah. And I, I know we, 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 we sometimes, we, 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 we say that at the, at the funeral service, well, I'm going to jump in a casket with them, which you know good well, you ain't jumping in no casket. That's right. But once they go in the ground, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, you have to at some point walk away from the burial site. The old you, at some point in time, you gotta walk away. You can't stay at the grave site. So if the old you have passed away, why are you still at the grave site of the old you? Passed away. I'm trying to get you in position to win. And if the old you did not win, stop operating in the old you and become the new you. It passed away. It says, behold, new things. Oh, I like that word, new. New things have come. Because spiritual awakening brings a new life. Spiritual awakening brings a new life. Thank you. <clears throat> Spiritual awakening yes. means that I see life differently. Yes. I think differently. Yes. I react differently yes. because I'm different. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And if I'm really different, there should be signs and wonders that I'm different. Yes. There should be tangible evidence outside of the four walls of the church that you're different. Uh, this is not a braggadocious statement. But I don't change for nobody. The way I am in here is the way I am out there. 
I don't have the energy to remember which me I gotta be. That's, that's, that's too hard for me to try to figure out which me I'm supposed to be in this segment, which me in that segment, which me in that. So I just be me. That's right, Sam. That's your heart. The new creature. Watch this. Pull this out. So it's a new creature. So if I'm new, I'm new. I can't be new at all at the same time. That's right. And, and it's not a difficult concept because most of you, I talk to women right now. Most of you, when you go, when you go into an event, you say, I gotta give me something new to wear. And that means from head to toe. She can't never just get a new dress. There's be new dress and new shoes. Yeah. And new jewelry to go with a new dress and a new shoe. But then if we come to church, we won't maybe partially new. I want new blessings, but where are our attitudes? Does that make sense for you? So if you knew from head to toe in your wardrobe, why don't we come new from head to toe in your spiritual walk? That's right. He says old things are passed away. They're gone. Then he makes an announcement. New things have come. New things. And I want new things to come. All right. If you're taking notes, write this down. But don't allow anyone, even yourself, to cause you to forfeit. Let me give you the definition of the word forfeit. To lose or be deprived of what's rightfully yours. Yeah. And many of us have forfeited our newness by holding on to our oldness. Uh -huh. Don't allow anyone, even yourself, to cause you to forfeit, to lose or be deprived of your new life in Christ because it offers you so much. Lord Jesus. When you become new in Christ, you become free. There's freedom in Christ. Amen. And you are forfeiting your freedom by trying to, as my grandfather would say, straddle the fence. That's right. You are one foot in the new and one foot in the old, and that causes damage. Yes. Decide which one you're going to be. But you're forfeiting the privilege of being new. God desires to come us and for us to come to him so he can redeem us but the devil wants to remind us of our old self so he can condemn us so he can kill our joy peace and hope he wants to train you dry you up you ever been out in, in the heat and, 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 and you get dehydrated and you become weak and, and you become thirsty and, and tired and fatigued that's the way the devil desires for you to live to drain your joy, to drain your peace, to drain your hope. So he keeps reminding you of the old you to condemn you with the heavy weights. The devil wants you wearing a weight suit everywhere you go. It's a suit of condemnation to remind you of every mistake you've ever made, to remind you every time you've fallen down, every time you've tripped up, every time you messed up. Because the devil knows as long as you're carrying the burdens of your past, you can never walk in the freedom of your newness. So so he wants to condemn you and beat you up. He's going to use you to beat yourself up. Every time you get a mirror, the devil wants to remind you of every mistake you've made, everything you've ever done wrong, so you'll never walk forward. He wants to hold you in place so he can beat the mess out of you. Lord Jesus. But God wants you to come to him so he can redeem you. Lord Jesus. So he can restore you. So he can renew you because God has a purpose for your life. Amen. And the devil realized that purpose. You know, the devil sees more in you than you see in yourself. That's why he's messing with you. Because the devil sees the old you, but he's focused on the new you. And he knows the new you ever get released, he has no power in your life. That's why he tries to hold you so close to it. Look at this. Turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Drop down to verse number 8. When Simon Peter saw this, 
He fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Yes. Like Jesus didn't know who he was. I'm a sinful man. It's like you telling Jesus about a game he already watched. That's right. You are we, we, we won. We were How was that? I know we won. I'm a sinful man. Yeah. Get away from me, Jesus. For he and his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. They just saw Jesus work some stuff out in their lives. And the old Peter was under condemnation. And he was thinking, I don't deserve what God is doing for me right now. Oh, uh, you missed that right there. See, the devil wants you to be in a position where you feel like you don't deserve a move of God in your life. If you feel like you don't deserve a move of God in your life, if you feel like you don't deserve a breakthrough, and you'll stay stuck in your current situation, you cannot move forward until you believe you qualify. And Satan will make you feel like you don't qualify. You too this, too that. Stay where you are. You'll never be able to go forward when God said, come to me. I got something for you. That's right. Jesus says to Simon, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, Simon. Let me bless you. Don't be afraid. God knows who you are. God knew who you were. God knows everything you've done, yet he woke you up this morning. And I'll say it over and over again to the day I die. He didn't wake you up without a purpose. He woke you up on purpose with a purpose. In spite of everything you've been through, he woke you up on purpose with a purpose. God has something for you to do. Yes, Lord Jesus. So he tells Peter, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Jesus calls Peter to follow him. Watch this. Peter replies, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm Simon. Mm -hmm. Notice the text. Jesus talks to Peter, mm -hmm. but Simon talks to Jesus. Jesus spoke to the redeemed man, not the old man. Peter answers from the view of the old man. Ooh. Which perspective are you responding to life? The old you or the new you? Jesus was dialoguing with Peter, the new man. But Peter was so stuck in the old man, he responded like Simon. Ah, uh, maybe you're not getting this. When you are speaking about yourself, do you refer to yourself in the future or the past? You already know what the past is going to get you. But the future is in his hands. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The assignment on your life, the old man can't handle. But the new man is well qualified. And the devil realizes that. That's why he wants to keep you stuck in your past. Because he's seen your future after God's redemptive power. After God cleans you up, the devil sees your potential. So he wants to keep you stuck. He wants you to respond like Simon. But Jesus is not calling Simon. He's calling the Peter out of you. Yeah. Jesus says, I see the best of you. You are worth saving. You are worth redeeming. You are worth me dying for. I see you. Yeah. But the question is, who do you see? Jesus. Who do you see? Who do you see? Church, don't get so wrapped up in your own press statements. Catch this now. Don't get so wrapped up in the fact you sing in the choir. Preach it in the pool pit. On one of the ministry list. Don't get so wrapped up in that. You only one grace for all the way. Uh, you don't, you don't I, I know you're doing good now. This season. Don't get so caught up. Jesus. You forget about Jesus. That's right. Watch this, watch this. 
Simon is called by Jesus. Simon is restored and renewed. And then Simon goes and do great things for the Lord. They're having a conversation in Matthew 16 and 16. Jesus having a conversation with the disciples and said, Who do they say I am? The other disciples in their baffled, their, their speeches, they don't know how to respond. Jesus said, who, who do they say I am? I mean, y'all hanging around me all day. Y'all saw me perform miracle after miracle. Who do they say I am? And they say, some say you this and some say you that. And Jesus said, well, what do y'all say? Oh, we don't know how to respond. But then Peter jumps up. You are the son of God. That's right. You're the Messiah. Yeah. You're the Savior. Uh -huh. You're the Lord. Yeah. He was born this season. Yes. Then we see another story in the Bible where Jesus sends the disciples off in a boat and says, y'all go on ahead. I'm going to stay back and relax and pray. And You can find that story in, in, in the book of Luke and they're getting ready to go on the other side. And Matthew and Luke and the water gets kind of rough and Jesus starts walking on the water toward the boat. The disciples are afraid. They start trembling. The same guys who saw Jesus say, peace be still. The same guys who saw Jesus turn water into wine. Now they're afraid of the water. The water got a little rough. But Jesus walking on water to them. They trembling. Peter says, Lord, if that's you, Call me. Jesus, Jesus, but watch this now. Watch check this. Jesus does not say Peter come. Jesus simply says to all the uh, disciples, come. Peter was bold this season. He jumps out of the boat and starts walking on water. Watch this. This is my point. This season, Peter was the valedictorian of discipleship class. He was on it. He was full of faith. Aggressive, walking on water like Jesus, but then watch what happens. The wind. He took his focus off of Jesus and put it on what he was hearing. Oh, you missed that. You missed it. That's why I get kind of leery when you cheer too loud for me. Cause don't want to take my focus off Jesus and get caught with what I'm hearing. Peter heard the wind and the Bible he started to sink. I've seen too many church folks with a holler and a collar take their focus off Jesus and start hearing the wind of a dollar. Lord and start to sink. But when Peter lost his focus and started to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! And Jesus immediately stuck his hand out and redeemed him again and again and again. The disciple with the most boldness also made the most mistakes. Uh -huh. Oh, you missed that. The one who did the most for Jesus also messed up the most. Yeah. But it's easy to judge somebody if you ain't doing nothing. Yeah. You, you can list all my mistakes because I'm always working. It's easy for you to have a perfect record if you ain't never done nothing. Yeah. 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 Well, he didn't get that one right, but you ain't done nothing to get wrong. So Peter got back on the boat, redeemed and restored again. But now this pattern, this pattern, is a vicious cycle in Peter's life. And Peter, I'll never forsake you, Lord. You can trust me. I'm your road dog. Lord, I'll die for you. But I'll cut one of the Negroes for you. He said, Say, get behind me. Uh -huh. Jesus calls his main boy Satan. Wow. 
Yes, he did. Because Jesus saw he was tripping. Uh -huh. Peter had gotten too wrapped up into who Peter was. Yeah. So Jesus says, by the time the rooster crows three times, uh -huh. boy, you're going to forsake me. He said, no, not I, Lord. I'm not the one. I got you. We got to throw down. We throw down. Lord, whatever it takes. So I kept reading the Bible, and then it's this Judas sold Jesus out, and this angry mob comes to, to get Jesus. Check, check the language out. It says, Peter is now a distance away looking. Now, I thought you said you had my back. I thought you said you was down. I thought you said you was, you was OG and you was a, a gangster to the end. I thought you said you was tough. They come get Jesus and Peter way back here looking. <laughs> That's right, Pastor. The Bible says this. The servant girl sees Peter and say, Hey, weren't you with Jesus? Shh. Yeah. Yeah. This is the same Peter who said, You're the Lord. You're the Savior. You're the Messiah. The other guy comes up. Hey, you was with Jesus last time I saw him. Hey, bro, what? I don't know that dude. I don't know what Jesus. That's why he looked like me. You, you, know, you, know, you know, her brother, how, how, how she, her girlfriend came and told her she saw you at the movie with another chick. She said, that wasn't me. That dude just looked like me. Oh my God. Lord Jesus. He put one of the movies. That wasn't me. That dude just looked like me. Oh you know, hey, man, no. He was with Jesus. Uh-huh. Through his knife. I man, I told you I wasn't no man. Jesus. <laughs> See it again, I was like. That's right, that's right. And then now watch this. The third time he denounces Jesus, they're carrying Jesus out. And that's why you gotta read the Bible. Yeah. The Bible says Jesus looked back yeah. at Peter. Oh. Yes he did. Say that. Yes he did. His yeah. eyes. Hey. Then Peter remembered. Remember, he told me I was going to mess up. But I was so wrapped up in myself, I didn't protect myself from myself. As he looked him in his eyes, and Peter ran outside and wept. Can I be honest? I know you can't, but I can. I'm free. Over the last 27 years of my life preaching the gospel, Lord Jesus. there's been plenty of times I've found myself outside. Yes, sir. Lord, I've messed up again. Lord Jesus. Lord, after all you've done for me, I've messed up again. did this, you did that to me, and I still end up denying you. I don't know you can't do that, you, you can't do that. You gotta, you gotta pretend like you ain't never messed up. But the Bible says all oh, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So I'm transparent over, I'm one of those all, you know. I, I've made some mistakes along these last 27 years. So Peter was on the outside. Might as well go back to the Simon. Bring the fishing poles. Get the six pack. Let's go fishing. So Peter goes back fishing. I'm in the text, y'all. Probably I'm in the text. But Peter goes back fishing and cussing. But this time, the expert fisherman can't catch nothing. Nothing Peter does works. Jesus goes in the grave. Three days, uh -huh. Peter can't catch nothing. Every time we open a can of beer, just uh -huh. Lord Jesus. nothing works. Uh -huh. On the third day, Jesus gets up. They get to the grave. Jesus tells the angel to tell the people to go tell my disciples I arose just like I said. He said, oh. And go get Peter. That's right. Oh, you missed this. You missed right. it. He says, hey, go get Peter. Because Jesus knew those self-righteous, holy church folks would not go get Peter. Yeah. But Jesus knew.
do, like the lost coin, the lost sheep, and the lost son, they still had value. So Jesus says, go tell my disciples I was risen and make sure you tell Peter too. So I kept reading the story. Yeah. And Peter's out in the water fishing, catching nothing. Jesus says, drop the nets again. They can't recognize me in his voice. Peter dropped the nets. Now more fish than ever. Watch this. They get to the shore. Remember the last time Jesus saw Peter? Peter had messed up. All the disciples are there, except Judas. And Jesus looks Peter in the eye and says, You ready to preach now? Uh huh. That messed me up. All the ones who had made a mistake, he don't call them. He called the one who's messed up over and over again. He looks Peter in the eye and says, Now, are you ready? You, you, you may have turned your back on him. You may stop looking at him, but Jesus never. Be the Lord, what I gotta do? Feed my sheep, which means preach the gospel. Well, what do I tell him? How I saved you. How I redeemed you, how I restored you, how I got you up, how I blessed you, how I came and got you over and over and over and over again, how you messed up because a righteous man, Proverbs 24 16, a righteous man falling down seven times, but good news is he gets back up again. Do I have anybody in this house that you falling down and God picked you back up again and again and again and again? Your life sounds like a 1980 vinyl record that's over and over again. Like I can. You may not know 
798 scriptures by heart like I do. You may not spend hours and hours in the Bible just like I have, but you got your own story to tell. You can tell how when you were down and out, he didn't turn on you, but the Bible says why we were yet sinners. He died for us. You just share that story. When I was messed up, the Lord saved me. When I was out of my mind, the Lord renewed my mind. When I didn't know which way to go, the Lord gave me a new direction and a new life. But when I was blind, when I was dying, when I was... The Lord made a way. You can share that story. And you open your mouth and share that story. I dare you to go back to the same clock to get high on. I dare you to go back to the same hood to get dirty in. just join the church. This is about walking into the news of your life and reaching your full potential. If you're here this morning and you need to start your life over again, won't you join me in this altar? These men and women that jumped up, they jumped up because they, they want to help me help you. Won't you come and join me in this altar? Just as you are. Peter didn't get clean first. He was still silent when Jesus called him. And the process. They don't take about the process. It's a process. They can get here overnight. It's a process. And I'm still being processed. I like like going to a place of business and they have a sign, excuse the mess, work in progress. I can trust them kind of people. They're not hiding the infraction saying we working on some stuff. To be better. So every man on this aisle a work in progress. We're working on some stuff to be better, to better serve you. If you're here this morning, come down these aisles. Let us help you with your full attention.